welcome back inside the Now Morning Show. As I mentioned before, we're going to be chatting about your body and you this morning. And of course, you know, yesterday we spoke with the Minister of Health and celebrated the fact that we have 800,000 right. Sinopharm vaccines that touched down this week. We're aiming to vaccinate the population and get 600,000 people vaccinated by the end of September, which right. is fantastic news. The rollout starts soon. And this morning, we're going to be chatting with the Director of Women's Health at the Ministry of Health to just kind of find out more about how the vaccinations apply to nursing and pregnant women as well. So good morning, Dr. Adish Sirju Singh. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me on your show. Good morning to the population of Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, so are vaccines safe for women who are pregnant or nursing young children? Okay, so um, yes, yeah, an excellent question as always. Um, so I'll have to separate pregnant women from the breastfeeding population. All right. As you appreciate, of course, there's a baby inside that's developing in pregnant in a pregnant woman as opposed to outside with a breastfeeding woman. Right. So, well, the current WHO approved vaccines, um, they have actually all been approved for use in selected situations uh, in pregnancy. But it's um, a country decision that has to be taken depending on how you know severe the disease is in your population, how many vaccines you have, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a long history of uh, safety profile with vaccines and the types of vaccines and the technology we use. However, there is uh, very little data for the current vaccines as yet for pregnancy. So, so we're a little bit more cautious in Trinidad and Tobago. Right. So for now, the advice is if you're pregnant, we are not allowing you to take the vaccine at this time until we get more research and more data comes up. And that data is coming. Studies are actually ongoing, for example, with AstraZeneca, with Sinopharm, and a lot of the other vaccines. So that information is liable to change. Right. And so with regards to the breastfeeding women now. Right. So now this is a different situation, and we have a little bit more leeway, as you would say. Um, we're still, of course, awaiting more data, but for the Sinopharm vaccine in particular, the technology that is employed is what's called an inactivated vaccine. It's very similar to the vaccines we would have used, for example, before we use actually vaccines in pregnancy right now. Um, it's a policy that we do that people just don't talk about. It's, it's some way of protecting the mother during pregnancy for diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, seasonal influenza, that's what we do to protect our mothers. And what it does is when the babies are born, those vaccines produce antibodies to help the babies when they are born to prevent them from getting those childhood diseases until they could be vaccinated. Right. So it's the same thing that's happening with the Sinopharm vaccine. We are allowing now breastfeeding mothers to get the vaccine because the vaccine itself doesn't go across in the breast milk to the baby. So that's good safety there all that goes across would be what's called the antibodies which what the vaccine is designed to produce mm -hmm. and these antibodies this is very important can now go to that baby and give baby protection against covid19 actually especially in those first few months of life as well so it's, you know if these are very small neonates uh, newborn babies we're talking about so so the policy of the government at this time is now we have allowed only the use of the Sinopharm vaccine. We're very specific. We're not asking breastfeeding mothers to come out to get vaccinated. So if you fall into a high risk category, for example, you are a healthcare worker. Uh, you, know, you know, women make up the vast majority of our working population in some of these groups, nursing staff. We have um, the supermarket industry, food and beverage industry, pharmacists, construction workers, security services. If you happen to have a small baby and you're breastfeeding and you're eligible for the vaccine as you roll it out, you can safely receive the vaccine. It's, there's no harm. You can continue safely to breastfeed because of course breastfeeding is the best nutrition for that baby <laughs> as the baby is born. As they say, breastfed is best fed. Uh, so, Absolutely. any particular reason why only the Sinopharm is being allowed to, you, to be used for breastfeeding women and not the AstraZeneca, even though the country is, you know, using the AstraZeneca as well? Oh, okay, sure. Well, well, let's just put it down to the scientific information. 
that's available to what's called the National Immunizational Immunization Technical Advisory Group. So there, there's a lot of science and data that has to be submitted before approvals are done. Uh, so for now, let's just concentrate on the fact that the Sinopharm has been approved, which is the good news. Other approvals, I'm sure, will come in time as more data comes up. And then there are lots of vaccines being coming to us at some point in time. There are hundreds of vaccines in development. So as the vaccine gets approved, we will let that information be released to the public. I, I just don't want to confuse the population too much today. All right. Um, I just want to, to find out. You said that it's, it's safe for mothers who are breastfeeding, you know, newborn babies to, to, trans to take a transfer the antibodies and stuff like that. But as they get older, if, if it is that, you know, you had a child two years ago, maybe still breastfeeding, I don't know, toddlers, a year, and, oh. a year plus, uh, is it safe for them as well? Oh, oh, absolutely. So remember, you can, we, we talk about breastfeeding in different phases as well. For the first six months of life, you can do what's called, called exclusive breastfeeding. Um, you don't need to supplement the baby in any way unless medically needed. No water, no added food, etc. So that's all the nutrition the baby needs. But from six months and beyond, up to two years, you can continue to breastfeed and use breast milk. So that's, that's the scenario. So all of these women are eligible for vaccination. All right. Uh, Doc, can you tell me some of the risks associated with pregnant women if they were to contract COVID-19? Oh, yes. Okay. So that's a whole topic by itself. But in, in summary, <laughs> pregnant women are considered at higher risk if you contract COVID-19. So you now classified them at higher risk for getting into an ICU and even from dying. And we are seeing this worldwide. We've actually had, as of this week, we've recorded 183 pregnant women who have, re who have had COVID-19 during this, from the start of the pandemic in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, some of these women have gotten very ill. So um, I always say, you know, when we speak about these things, we talk from our real experiences, uh, we are not, um, chair experts, um, we, we know we see it, we, we only feel that's what the healthcare workers do. When we give advice, we, we try to give the advice from real experience, it's not from research on, on Google or Facebook, we, we give you facts and that's what we're here to do. But pregnancy is really a high risk condition, especially if you're older in pregnancy over the age of 35, obesity, asthma, diabetes, high blood pressure. And if you're in the second half of pregnancy, that's all of these are additional risks in pregnancy so for pregnant women they just have to be extra cautious and follow the the health guideline protocols because they can't get the vaccine at this point in time yeah in fact that advice holds for every single member of the population <laughs> um and you know I, I i'll keep reiterating this it's not just for pregnant women but of, of course for anybody any person who cannot receive the vaccine for whatever reason under the age of 18 for example we have to follow all of these guidelines and pregnant women especially have to be careful as well. Because remember, these women have to attend their antenatal clinics. We can't stop them from coming. They have to make their babies. They may have emergencies. So they have to go out. They have to go to these clinics and, and so. So the exposure risk will be higher. So they really have to follow those guidelines. You know, I, I can't help but wonder, Doc, if there's anything extra that, they, that we can do to assist. Because I feel as though... Um, I don't know, like, yes, we, we know that. All right, so then the, the antibodies, right? Let, let me talk about the antibodies that you say are transferred through breastfeeding. Are yes. they not also able to be transferred while they're pregnant? Because the same nutrients that, that women are feeding the children, that's inside of them. What's the difference? Yeah, so in fact, that's a, that's a very good question. That's what the research is all about. Yeah. Remember, when you get with the other vaccines I mentioned that we're doing now, diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, influenza, seasonal influenza, we give the mothers the vaccine and the antibodies are actually transferred across through the placenta. They can pass and get across to the baby as well as during breastfeeding. Right. But we just don't have enough data to strongly recommend it, but I'm sure as the research comes up, remember it's, early, it's really early days, eh? you're yeah. talking a few months only of, of data being produced. But right now, the, the Sinopharm vaccine, for example, is being studied in children, in pregnant women, AstraZeneca, similarly, Pfizer, and all of the vaccines that are coming on board. There are going to be literally hundreds of vaccines 
I would say by the end of the year that we are talking about, it's going to get really confusing just now. <laughs> It already is in some parts of it, but so what you up? I mean, basically, I'm I'm grateful for the the clarity on it because what we're saying is that we just don't want to risk it. We don't have enough information, and we simply just don't want to risk it as a nation. Yeah, yeah, and 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 for those who read the WHO guidelines, you will see it's allowed. So WHO is a little more liberal because it's about saving lives in the early phases of the pandemic and vaccination. That's what this is about. So. They have said, look, you, you know, patient, people are dying worldwide. You know, they, they're going to risk it, but they're still leaving it up to the individual countries to make that decision because no two countries are alike, you mm -hmm. know, although it's a pandemic and so. So, so we do have a little bit of leeway um, and hopefully we won't have to, to go the other way. Things are improving, as you have discussed already. We, we are hopefully seeing the light at the end of the day with the, this, with the number of vaccines that are coming on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we're going to continue hoping for the best and making sure that we encourage people to wash your hands, wear your mask, and stay socially distant and be as safe as possible. Uh, Dr. Suju Singh, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning and for sharing this information and bringing us the clarity on, on um, you know, how we're dealing with, with vaccines regarding pregnant women versus nurse breastfeeding women and women who are nursing children. So thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Adish Suju, Suju Singh, Director of Women's Health at thank the Ministry of Health. Enjoy the rest of your day. We take a quick break and come back with more inside the Now Morning Show. 183 women have been pregnant so far, successfully delivering children in this pandemic. Oh, we. Amazing. Yeah. Let's take that break and come back with more.